Now is the best time to start a coaching business and I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can get started. My name's James King and I built the Coaching Movement Limited, which is a six-figure coaching and consulting company that has helped over 180 coaching clients over the last five years. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from brand new coach to successful coaching company owner. You'll learn how to design an amazing coaching product, how to gain your first coaching clients and then how to scale up to six figures and beyond. Remember that this video is incredible chronological order and it takes you all the way from beginner coach to successful company owner so make sure you watch all the way through to get all of the benefit okay so let's dive in the first thing that you need to understand is that coaching is a skill that needs to be learned for a very specific education just because you're very good at giving advice to your friends or you've had a successful career before does not mean that you can then go out and successfully coach people to be able to improve their lives careers or build businesses coaching is a a skill where you ask people questions and guide them to finding their own conclusions which you're then able to support them in carrying out an actioning. This method of questioning needs to be learned through an ICF accredited course and if you don't already know the ICF is the International Coaching Federation and when you take that course it will teach you how to facilitate conversations, how to do motivational interviewing which is a line of questioning that allows people to take responsibility for their actions and it will show you how you can give people advice without making them feel defensive. And once you learn all of those skills, you will then be able to coach and guide people through the journey that you need to take them on without them getting defensive and without them saying yes, yes, yes to you in the meeting and then actually not going out and following through with the action. 99% of coaches fail because they're not good at coaching. If you take an ICF accredited course, I can guarantee you that you will learn the skills of coaching and facilitation that you need to build an exceptional business. This is a non-negotiable part of being a successful coach and it's the first thing that you should do before you even start marketing. Once you've selected your education, then step two is choosing the niche that you will work in. Coaching is a very broad skill and once you're able to deliver quality coaching facilitation sessions, then you will actually be able to guide people through the process of getting to any outcome. You can use coaching to help people to lose weight. You can also help them build a business or help them overcome the relationship issues that they're having. But it's really up to you which of those niches you want to focus on. When choosing your niche, you want to think about what background do you have, which will allow you to be able to understand everything that the client is going through, and then be able to offer advice if the time arises. And what thing do you really, really enjoy talking about and helping people to achieve? Because even if you're good at something, if you're not passionate about it, then it's not going to be effective in your coaching methods because a passionate coach is an effective coach. When you're passionate about something, when it's a subject that you really care about, then you will be happy to sit there and listen to the client. You will be engaged in the session and you will be really passionate about delivering your marketing materials because you will just want to go out there and help as many people as possible to overcome the thing that you know you can help them with. Remember that once you choose your niche and start actually taking on clients, you will be spending all day on the phone or in person with clients, coaching them on that specific topic. So you will be talking about it all day. Do you really wanna talk about something that you don't enjoy? No, so make sure you pick something that you find fulfilling and enjoyable and that you're passionate about and that you have knowledge within and that is your niche. But do know that your niche will change over time and that's okay because sometimes your niche finds you and you can't force yourself to create a market for something that doesn't exist. For me personally, the journey that I went on, I was really involved with helping people around their mental health in the beginning because I love talking about mindset and overcoming struggles and procrastination and all of these mental issues that stop people from doing things they're supposed to do. But actually I have swerved a lot more towards business coaching recently because I have a background in business, I've built multiple companies and I'm able to provide excellent advice in this area. So more and more business people are coming to me and because it's a very lucrative market then to be honest I've just swerved more and more in that direction. Therefore my niche has actually found me in a lot of ways as opposed to me just finding my niche. 
Once you've developed your niche, the third step is to create a framework within that niche. The thing is, coaching is incredibly oversaturated and there's thousands of other coaches out there just like you providing almost the exact same service to a very limited number of customers. And those customers are looking for a very unique experience and they want to know that they're going to be guided through a framework that is going to deliver them the results that they want to achieve. Because coaching is a high ticket item and nobody wants to spend thousands of dollars to not get the results that they're hoping for. And they've probably been let down by other coaches before because there's so many people out there who don't have any education and who don't have the skills that they claim they do, who are delivering poor quality coaching products which means that many people have been burned before and wasted money with other coaches, so they are resistant and they are fearful that they're going to lose their money. So in order to convince them to work with you, you need to have a very specific framework that allows you to stand out from the competition. When you look at my coaching business, I have a very specific unique framework which I use to guide small business owners and entrepreneurs through the steps of finding clarity, designing a strategy, building up their product, marketing it, and ultimately scaling up their revenue. And this is done through a combination of coaching sessions which help people to find clarity and make business decisions, daily accountability check-ins to make sure that people are doing the work that they're supposed to be doing, strategic planning so that there's a very clear goal and then stepping stones to get there, and 24 seven support, which means that clients can send voice messages or video messages all the time and they will get responded to and their questions answered. And that is a framework and a system which all involves very specific tools and very specific methodologies that have been developed over the years. And that then allows me to stand out from the crowd because I'm very confident that I have this framework and I know that if somebody starts at A, they will get to B. And I also have hundreds of testimonials that show that I can do that as well. Therefore, the risk has been very much reduced for my prospective clients. And it makes me stand out because nobody else is doing exactly what I do. Nobody else is using the tools that I am. Nobody else is giving as much value to the client and nobody else has this kind of roadmap or this kind of framework. And that is what has made me so successful. So when you first get into the market, if you really want to stand out, you need to find a framework of your own that you can offer to your client. The best way to develop this framework before you even start working with any clients is think about the niche that you want to work in. You probably want to work in that niche because you have some experience within that niche of overcoming struggle or you have some knowledge within that niche, whether it's educational or whether it's just interest. Now, if you were in that niche and you were having that problem yourself, imagine all of the tools that you would ideally need to be able to get results and overcome that issue. So for example, if you're a weight loss coach, what are the strategies and tools and frameworks that you would need to be able to lose 50 pounds within any given amount of time? In that weight loss scenario, you might need daily accountability check-ins so that you stay on track. You might need somebody who's sharing your food logging data with you so that they can see the data, which means you're then accountable to tracking properly. You might want weekly meetings to discuss the challenges you're having in your environment and in your life and then come up with strategies with your coach about how to overcome those. And you might want somebody to meet you at the gym, which means that you're actually accountable to showing up to your workouts. So that is the kind of framework that you could build around a weight loss product, but you can also think of similar things for life coaching, for helping people with ADHD, for business coaching, to help people to grow their business, which is what I do. There's a framework for all of these issues and it's up to you to develop it and that will make it much easier for you to pitch the clients. But know that you will never get this framework perfect from the beginning, but just come up with the best framework you can and as your clients come to you, you will see the challenges that they're facing and you will develop tools and you will develop methodologies that help them overcome those challenges which you can then apply to the rest of your clients in the future. And that way your framework will expand and improve over time. So at this point, you've got a great education, you've found your niche, you've built a framework, it's now time to think about your messaging. Your messaging is the way that you speak to your clients. 
when you speak to your clients, you should be speaking to them like they're a friend. You need to speak in a way that you know them. The reason why you've chosen a niche that you're passionate about and that you know well and that you have experience within is because you know how to speak to that person. I work in business coaching. I know what it was like to start in the beginning as a solo entrepreneur business owner. I, I remember all of the procrastination. I remember the fear. I remember struggling to find out what strategies work and which ones don't. So I know exactly what I was going through at that time. And I know that my ideal prospective coaching client is struggling with those same issues now and I have the solution to help them overcome that. But I also know how to speak to that person. That means that in my messaging, I can speak to their fears. I can speak to the procrastination that, I'm, that they're having. I can speak to the overwhelm that they're feeling day to day. All of your messaging is speaking to those problems that your perfect client has. And don't think about it like you're speaking to a crowd of people or like you're writing on social media. Write every post or make every video like you're speaking to a specific person. Imagine having a one-to-one -one conversation with a friend who is struggling with those issues and show empathy for the problems that they're facing and remind them that you have been there before. And then also remind them that you are where you are now and you have a solution for them. That way you are exaggerating the problem that they're having and you're helping them to realize that they have a problem and you're then positioning your unique product and framework as the solution to that problem. But just know that chat GPT marketing is not gonna cut it in this scenario. Your marketing must be authentic. Your posts must be handwritten. Your videos must be spoken from the heart with passion, with authenticity and with care about the client. That way people will resonate with you as a person, they will believe you, they will trust you because they see you and they can see it in your eyes, they can see the passion in your face and when they trust you and when they believe in you, they will buy from you and you cannot get that from AI, you cannot get that from ChatGPT, you can only get that through quality marketing that is written or recorded from the heart. Don't be afraid to share your story. Tell them exactly what it was like for you. Tell them where you were and where you are now. People love to buy into a human story. People buy from people. That's why in business, there's so many people out there now who are building personal brands because it's way easier to market a product as an individual as opposed to a brand because people make emotional purchasing decisions based on feelings and nobody really has you know, unless it's Nike or Louis Vuitton or something, one of these big brands, nobody really has any strong feeling towards just a logo, but they will have a strong feeling towards a post which they can put a face to. So help people to buy into your story, into you as a person, that is what's gonna work. Now you've crafted your message, it's time to start marketing and I have a whole video which explains how to get coaching clients and I'll link to it in the description down there. So I think that would be really useful for you to watch right now, but I'm just gonna give you the TLDR during this section. So most people make the mistake of thinking that they need to get started by making TikTok videos or Instagram reels or maybe even posting on YouTube. And yes, YouTube is a great platform and Instagram can be really useful and TikTok has got a high reach or whatever, but they're actually the slowest way and the most difficult way to get new clients because there's a high learning curve to creating content online. It takes a long time to nurture your prospective clients. They probably need to watch your videos for six or 12 months or more before they actually make a purchase. And it's just, it's just very time consuming. So the best way to get your coaching business off the ground and find your first clients is to actually put yourself on directories like Fiverr and Upwork. Or in the UK, we also have a life coaching directory called, ironically, Life Coach Directory. And on these platforms, although the customers are quite price sensitive, which means you won't be able to earn huge amounts of money for your time at the beginning, the people that arrive there are already pre-warmed up. When I go onto Life Coach directory or onto Fiverr and I type in Life Coach into the search bar, I've already got my credit card details implanted into the system or I'm already holding my card in my hand and I'm typing that in because I'm ready to hire somebody. That means that the people that come through those platforms will have like an 80% conversion rate. 
And although you're not able to price your services very high at the beginning, once you start getting more and more clients come in, you will be able to raise your prices because the people coming in will leave you positive reviews because you're a quality coach. And that means that those reviews will appear on your profile and that will rise you up the rankings, which means you can then increase your prices. It also means that with your existing clients who started with you at a low price, they'll be getting so much value from you that they will be happy to pay you more as you step up your pricing. And this is the way that I got my coaching business started at the beginning. And you would be amazed that you can go from like no clients to having 20 clients and earning $5,000 a month in revenue just by going on these freelancer platforms. It's actually pretty fast to be honest. I suggest that while you're on those freelancer platforms, at the same time you're going to networking events. People now underestimate the value of doing in-person marketing. It's really hard to convince somebody to buy something with a TikTok video or even a YouTube video. But when you go out to networking events and you meet people in real life, you can actually have eye contact with them and you, they can see that you're a real person and they just trust you so much more and therefore it's way easier to convert people. Also, many networking groups have referral programs where everybody in the group is trying to refer clients to each other. Therefore, other people from your networking group will be out there in the world telling people about your coaching services. So this is a really effective way to grow your business. And my mentor actually scaled a six-figure business in a year just by going to networking events. He doesn't even have social media. So get out there and see people face to face. And this can even be going down to local gyms or local coffee shops and leaving leaflets there or speaking to the person behind the desk and saying, if anybody's looking for coaching, then please let me know. I'm happy to give you 20% referral fee of their first payment if you find me a client. These are the kind of relationships you can set up with people in your community. And this is a very fast way and effective way to get clients. And once you've got that handful of clients, you can then start asking them for referrals. So when you meet a client and they really like you and they're getting value, you can say to them, do you know anybody who would benefit from the coaching that I offer? And they will say yes, and they will tell their friends about it. And then people will come to you. And the great thing about that is it costs you zero pounds to do or zero dollars. You don't need to put any effort into it. And the clients who arrive or the prospects who arrive who are friends of your coaching clients are already warm because their friend has told them that you're good at coaching. So it'd be very easy for you to get clients. So I highly recommend leveraging referrals once you already have that handful of clients. And only once you've done those methods would I suggest putting significant time and effort into social media. And when I started on social media, I made so many mistakes. I jumped around between all of the different platforms. I've tried Twitter, I've tried Instagram, TikTok, YouTube obviously, I do LinkedIn and I did all of these things and at the end of the day, like until you focus on one platform and put all of your energy into it, then you will never actually be successful because it takes at least one year of consistent posting to actually turn a social media channel into a reliable revenue or client acquisition source. So for me, my favorite platforms are YouTube and LinkedIn. I find that this is where high net worth professional individuals hang out who are actually relevant clients to my business coaching service. Now, if you're like a makeup coach or something, okay, then maybe those people hang around on Instagram or something. But for the vast majority of people, you're looking for professional uh, high net worth individuals who can afford high ticket coaching then those people are normally hanging around on YouTube and on LinkedIn. So I suggest you start publishing content there and I suggest you really focus on doing it consistently for at least 12 months, not expecting any sales within that first 12 months and actually not trying to force your products upon anyone, but just practicing making quality content and putting a value out there into the world. Once you've implemented all of those marketing strategies, then you will get interested people contacting you about those services. And these calls only matter if you actually convert them into paying clients. So it's really important that you approach these calls with the right mindset. Now many people arrive on this call and all they do is try to sell the prospect their coaching service. They will tell the prospect how amazing they are, how amazing their service is, and all of the things that they're going to do for them. 
And normally, then, the person will speak for 80% of the call, and the prospect will speak for 20% of the call. But actually, that needs to be reversed. So on any consultation call, the prospect who arrives on the phone should be doing 80% of the talking, and you should be doing 20%. Because this is your opportunity to actually deliver them a mini coaching session so that they can feel the value of what you're able to offer. So you should approach that call asking them what their goals are, what they believe is stopping them from achieving those goals, what kind of strategies they feel like need to be implemented to get there, and then how they would measure their success. And once you've asked them all of those questions and you've coached them around those things to get those answers, you can then position your product as the solution to that at the end of the call and say, thanks for sharing all of that for me. Um, based on everything you've shared, here's how we might go about achieving everything that you want to achieve. And you can then use all of the information they've given you to actually get them to buy into your program by telling them that you're able to solve all of those problems. And that only takes a few minutes at the end of the call. And once you've done that, the client will feel great. They've already seen objective value from the call and they will buy into your framework and they will onboard to you as a client without you even needing to sell them anything. This is how modern marketing works. You provide people value and you keep giving them value and then eventually they will give you money without you even having to ask. I know this works because I've used this method within my own business and I've converted over 80% of my sales calls in the last four years since I actually started. So this is the way forward and I also coach many other coaches and small business owners and after applying this method to their business, they significantly increase the amount of consultation calls they convert into clients. And I'm going to make another video in the future which is a deep dive into consultation calls. So if you want to see that, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Okay, so now you've got a bunch of clients and that's great, but none of this actually matters if you're not delivering exceptional results for your clients. Most coaching companies fail because they're able to get some clients, but they deliver such poor service to their clients that their business becomes unsustainable. Because marketing is very energy intensive and it's exhausting having to market your business 24 seven and try and convince people to onboard you. And if you keep delivering poor quality results, then it will get more and more difficult to find clients because you will not get any positive testimonials and nobody will be giving you any referrals and therefore you will never build up any social proof or social credit. And that social proof, those referrals, those testimonials are really important because it makes it 10 times easier to convert people into clients. It's so much easier to just retain the clients you already have than actually keep having to go out and find new ones. So when it comes to the business model within coaching, my preference is to build a product which delivers monthly recurring revenue. I've worked with many coaches who have eight week programs or 12 week programs and it's, and it's like a transformation. And that means that at the end of the 12 weeks, then the client has finished that transformation and then they're going to finish paying the coach. Now that's a problem because that means that you constantly need to be out there searching for new people to work with and it becomes very feast or famine. So my suggestion is that you set up a business where you build yourself into your coachee's workflow so that you become an integral part of their life so that they keep paying you on a monthly recurring basis and you never need to keep going out and searching for new clients. You will know exactly what's coming in at the end of the month and it will be much more stable. But do know that even if you're delivering results for your client, the best way to get them to stay is just to build an amazing personal relationship with them. People actually make purchasing decisions based on emotion more than objective opinion a lot of the time. So if your coachee becomes your friend, if you treat them with respect, if you never let them down, if you actually have a personal connection with them, then they will always keep paying you and you will have clients for years, not just for weeks. So don't be afraid to speak to them about their personal life. Chit chat with them at the beginning of the call. Build rapport with them. Go above and beyond to deliver everything possible to them. Over deliver on their expectations. If you're due to just speak once per week for 45 minutes, 
okay, and that call is coming to an end, but there's still something really important to discuss, give them more time, be generous with your time. If you know that something important is happening that you just thought about, and they need to know, and it would help them, then call them, even if it's outside of the coaching session. Just go above and beyond what anyone else would do. Deliver $200 worth of value for every $100 they pay you, and then they will keep paying you. Their success is your number one priority, and if you forget that, then your business will just crumble. So now you've got a steady stream of clients coming in, and you're delivering exceptional results to everybody, so now you just scale up over time. That means slowly increasing your prices and slowly improving the framework so that you're offering more and more value to your clients. Remember that you can't just charge more without adding more value. So the key here is to get better at coaching, get better tools, deliver better frameworks, give them better advice. And once you do those things, they will then be happy to pay you more because the more money they earn and the more happy they are and the better results that they get, then the more they will be willing to pay you. So improve and scale over time. Most coaches who complain that they're not earning enough or are not able to find enough clients are just not good enough at coaching. And that's the bottom line here. But to be fair, a lot of coaches actually would be able to deliver some really good quality service if they just understood how to do some marketing. And that's not something that most people go into coaching for. You went into coaching to help people, but now you realize that you need to do all of this marketing stuff and that it's really competitive and it's difficult to get clients and that can be pretty overwhelming. But I've made this video to help you solve that problem.